Welcome back to Municipal Stadium, Larry Kelly Field. I'm Billy Gahagan along with Rocky Yoakum and Steve Allen. We're about ready to start the second half between the Edgewater Eagles and the Mainland Buccaneers, this Class 6A semifinal in the state playoffs. Edgewater leading Mainland by a score of 21 to nothing. Coach Allen. Shocker of the state playoffs to this point, without question. I'm sure there are people following, not following only our broadcast, but around the state, getting uh, Twitter feeds or, or whatnot, and, and just not understanding what's going on and can't believe maybe that this ball game could be this way. And uh, I, we obviously have not looked forward to a second half with as much anticipation as we look forward to this one. It's awesome. I mean, Mayla's not been in a ball game like this. We talk about how quick they can score. We talk about the wealth of talent they have. Edgewater has done a good job of coming in here and taking away from them what they put their bread and butter, the roll pass, the, the scrambling ability of, of Denzel Houston. The, they've limited the big plays. They've made Mainland turn the football over. They, they've won some. They've made some big plays in the kicking game. I, it, it's, it's awesome. It's everything that we can we can hope for. And I just hope that Mainland comes out and uh, stands up like they and show they, they want the ball club they've been all year in the first half. And we're and, they will be. and we're by no stretch counting Mainland out. <laughs> no I mean, way. They're down 21 or nothing. We can't think of the last time they were down by by 21 points at all. Well, I think that's what makes it a great ball game. I think the fact that they've spotted them three touchdowns makes it a ball sure. game because they can they can get it back in a hurry. Coach Oakham, in the pregame, we talked about Craig Rucker, but this has definitely been the Brandon McLaughlin show. Absolutely. Uh, Brandon McLaughlin and, and number 20 CD uh, have been two stars on offense and defense here in the first half. I agree, Coach. I think CD Blair's played an awesome game, and he was one of the, the guys that Coach highlighted before the game and said that he had to play well for them to have a chance, and, and he has. We talked about swagger coming into the game, but Edgewater is showing a lot of confidence along with that swagger. Edgewater kicking the ball off. It's going to be fielded at the mainland 10. Here come the Buccaneers and another open field tackle by C. Edgewater. C.D. Blair. C.D. Blair on the uh, top. On cue. Uh, that, this cat, he, he's a baller. Once again, your score 21 to nothing. Edgewater leading mainland. The Buccaneers will have the ball first and 10 from their 25-yard line to start the second half. Coach Yoakum, what do you think? What, what would be your your speculation, your guess as to what was being said in the main locker room? <laughs> I would guess you probably couldn't play it on our feed here tonight. Fair enough. Uh, I'm sure that they were uh, told in no certain uncertain terms, unless there's a great change, their season was over. Coach Allen, there's what, a great change. What do you think was said in the Edgewater locker room? Well, I, I think that you're trying to tell your football team and re reiterate how explosive the same team that we got prepared to come over here to play, they're still in the other locker room, that we've probably awakened them, and if you need to expect their best effort in the second half, and please do not play as if this thing is over because it's in no way over. We talked last week, Coach Oakham, that I feel like Mainland is a better football team when they play like this, when they just line up and they just go fast. And here, I agree. here we go. I, I, I agree. They they look like a, the offensive line has opened up two nice holes for Killens here on this first drive, and uh, they're uh, they're starting this thing out like all great games are won in the second half. Killens again on the carry. He was knocked out of bounds by David Beecham, a senior who once he knocked him out of bounds just kind of followed him out there. Again, the swagger is still showing for Edgewater. Second down and two, Houston, again to Killens. Killens running like a man on a mission across the 40, down to about the 31-yard line. Again, nobody's counting out the Buccaneers, but a touchdown on this possession would be huge for Mainland. Finishing runs, <clears throat> opening up holes. They brought inside linebacker there and leaves a crease in the B gap. He finds it. Mainland's on the march. First and 10, Houston. Fakes it to Killens. He's going to keep it himself. Makes a move. Oh, picks up a nice block. And he's going to go uncontested for a touchdown. Five plays, and Mainland is in the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Minute and 20 seconds. And the crowd has come to life here. As well as the Mainland offense. What a, what a drive. <clears throat> it doesn't take long in high school for Omo. To, to take a flip-flop. It's pretty fickle. He's a pretty fickle guy. Yeah, he's got a blue shirt on right now. Yes, he does, Coach. Yes, he does. And the same thing that we did early on, you know, in the two-score deficit, we looked at Mainland's bench. 
Look at Edgewater's bench. <clears throat> They're a little shocked over there. It, it does. It takes it out of you. Edgewater giving no rush on the point after Baudet uncontested. His BAT is good. So with 10 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the third period, five plays into the third quarter. Mainland now down only by two scores. Edgewater leading by a score of 21 to 7. That's exactly what Mainland had to do, Coach Oakham. They certainly did. They, they, they had to come out of here and give everybody a reason to believe, and they did that. And now they're going to put their strong part of their team, or what has been the strongest part of their team all year, their defense out on the field, and uh, see how that goes. But the guys across the, the way from, from Mainland, I don't think they were unfazed by that. It, it almost looked as if they said, hurry up, let's go, let's get our offense back on the field so we can put seven more points on the board. Well, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, they just got introduced to the number one team in the state pretty, pretty quickly right there. The DJ has picked it up a notch. The fans have started to wave their yellow hankies, their flags, I was going to say, but it's it's definitely their yellow towels. Peter Baudet set to kick off from his 40-yard line. And the Eagles are anticipating a pooch kick. Yes, they are. As everybody is up to the 15 and closer. Let it go out of bounds. Fair catch, the call. Should have let it go out of bounds. That's Ronald Woodruff on the fair catch. Now that's, that, that's something I think you can coach. I was going to say, you can't coach that interception deal, but you can coach that. Yep. <clears throat> that's about that's about an eight-yard loss by allowing that to be fair caught on the field of play. We always have the guys in the back coaching those guys ahead of them up on that one to let them know they've got the angle. They can see the kick, you know, let it go, let it go, let it go. They're going to say that he fielded the ball before he went out of bounds, perhaps. Yeah, yeah he made the fair catch, yep. I think. So, should have been the first and ten Eagles from their 28-yard line. Pembleton to Dozier, gain of two on the play. No sense of urgency at all in the Eagles. Play comes in from the sideline. They break the huddle. Pembleton and Dozier again in the backfield. Ten minutes and counting. Dozier gets met rather quickly by Kevin McCrary and company. No gain on the play. It'll bring up third down. In fact, it'll be a loss of two on the play. It'll bring up third down. We'll call it nine, loss of one. Anybody want to call this play? Screen. There you go, coach. <laughs> maybe even maybe even a tunnel screen. They've thrown that three times tonight. It was only been effective once. Not nearly as effective as a little running back middle yeah, screen. Number four has caught a couple of those. You see, he's here. They're going to run it in the short side of the field if they run it that way. Walkers Good. out there in their nickel package. Pembleton. Tunnel Tunnel screen. Screen. In and out of the hands of Craig Rucker. It's going to bring up a definite punting situation for the Eagles. And it's nice when you've thrown the ball over top and you've made plays, but it still goes back to the fact that they really haven't had a lot of success on a lot of plays. No. So it's not really that hard to diagnose that they're, it's one of three, maybe four things. And the mainland was there, ready, ready at the right. And 21 to 7. <clears throat> we're not even three minutes into the second half, and mainland's going to get the ball back here with all the momentum riding long. MJ Butler into punt for the Eagles. Back deep to receive. One of the Buccaneers is Wilfred Taylor. The other one, I believe, is Tyree Bostick. Ooh. And that's not a good way. To punt the ball off. That's a punt of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yard punt by Mr. Butler. Didn't punt it for a first down. 
No, even that was short. Mainland takes over, first and 10 from the Edgewater 34-yard line. You know, you'd like to, you'd like to use your 25-second your clock, and you've got a lead, and that thing. But you really have to be careful that you don't take yourself out of the rhythm that, that you have. And I don't think that they were really milking that that much, but I know that that's a consideration when you do have a lead. And here's Mainland setting up shop with 30, 33 yards away from the alumni stripe, as you call it, Coach Yoakum. First and 10, Buccaneers. Houston and Killens in the backfield. It's a run. No, it's a fake. Houston's going to go up top. Has a receiver. That's a touchdown, folks. Number three. That's Halo Hannah. Wow. Welcome back. Like I said, uh, you know, the three touchdowns just kind of just kind of spot them. It's, Kind of like a handicap in a golf match, you know. <laughs> you're just trying to, you're trying to find a way to make it even, and here they are. The Buccaneers roaring back. Wow, that's six plays, thirteen, make it fourteen points. Eight fifty-seven to go in the third quarter. And all of a sudden, the 21 to nothing lead that Edgewater had starting the second half is now 21 to 14. I just knew that you were going to say that it had evaporated, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 no, because evaporation doesn't go as quickly That's as right. this lead. You are <laughs> right about that. Lord have mercy. So this is the, something else here. I mean, not that we didn't predict that it was possible, but I don't think even we could have thought that three minutes and three seconds into the second half, it would already be 21 to 14. No, I sure didn't. Baudette set to kick off. Again, Edgewater anticipating a short kick. And Baudette's going to pooch it one more time. Near side. Fair catch called by Ronald Woodruff. And the Eagles will have their second possession of the second half at their own 30-yard line. 30 or 27. 27, 28 yard line. Edgewater <coughs> desperately needing to get a little something going here. Even if it's just a couple of first downs so they can move it down and make Malin drive the field, it's just happened too fast and they're gonna have to they're gonna have to respond is what they're gonna have to do. <clears throat> They've determined if they're gonna double up on McLaughlin here. They're gonna in and out. No, they're not. They're gonna, yes, they are. Pebbleton takes the ball Got the screen. Him. Got him. Has the receiver. 12 has got him intended to come make a play yeah, on that ball yeah. because Westbrook never saw it. Intended for Buck Watkins. Incomplete. Great play call. Great play call. It's been there all night. They've made that play call about three times. Um, but Buck has just got to initiate. If he'll just come back, put his arms up, run through the defender for that, he'll get interference if he doesn't make the call. Second down and 10 for the Eagles. Here come the Buccaneers. Oh. Wow. Number 13 on the tackle, and he's going to get something here for unnecessary roughness at the end of it. That's Adam Hamilton making a great stop, great play, and then... It'll be dead ball, so it'll be a third down about nine when they get this all sorted out, I think. Giving him the business. Well, this can be from the original spot, yeah, not from the spot of the foul. Be, that's going to be a first down. Yes, it is. <clears throat> that's a big play there because Edgewater <laughs> has no momentum going. 
and you love the aggressiveness, but you, you just got to let the play be. The whistle's there. Just let the play be done. Automatic first down. So it'll be first and 10 for the Eagles from their 40-yard line. They're questioning where that penalty is marked off from, too, but it's from evidence from the previous spot. Here we go. It's already been marked. They need to just let that go and just play defense. No, oh, we're not going to talk about it. I'd almost rather them be wrong and live with it than to, to be told that they were wrong and change it, <laughs> yeah. if that makes any sense. And they'll have a hard time straightening this out because the chains have been moved. Been that, moved. That little thing they put on there to mark the yard line has been moved. So you're going to trust the other staff that it's going to benefit to, to give you that spot. I, I, you know, I'm not, I think you're too influenceable there. And the discussion is about whether this is marked off from the spot of the foul or from the previous spot. And so they're going to explain that. He's got to be telling Coach Wilson there's no way that we could <coughs> create this. possibly go yeah. back and figure yeah. out where it yeah. was because we yeah, have no... You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't do it. <coughs> Excuse me. They're just in, they, they're trusting this. And I don't understand how it's a, 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 a that's got to come, that's got to be a spot foul, not a line of scrimmage foul. I would <laughs> think since it's dead ball, they, they called it after the play was over, so the play was there. I agree. I, I was surprised when the referee walked back to the original line of scrimmage and then stepped off 15 yards. Well, but the only thing that I question is, aren't dead ball personal fouls automatic first downs regardless? That could be that could be our issue, and, and, I, and, I don't, and I'd like to tell you that I know the answer to that for sure. But I can tell you for sure they don't know. Oh, no and, doubt. And I'm and I'm up here, so it's not as a big a deal that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They should know that, and they're having to. I just thought all personal fouls were, were first downs in high school. I don't know that. It's turning into the NBA, it's a flagrant one or a flagrant two. <clears throat> Come on now. At this point, we've already spotted. We need to go. Well, and what we've done is we've been through a whole season with A1 officials, so we're, we're prepared for anything that happens. <laughs> prepared. Noted. Being at the practice, though, last week, I, I pointed out to, to Coach Rowland and to Coach Wilson <laughs> that I felt like they'd gotten a lot of good mileage and, and some versatility out of 13 Hamilton. I, I just felt like he's done a good job for them. And um, he's a lot bigger in person than he is. He's a good-looking young man. Yeah, yeah, he is. He? Yeah, yes, he's he got is. a full beard and a yeah. full head of hair, and he'll come stick it. The part, in my opinion, that makes this whole thing ridiculous is, once again, we have no video evidence to refer to. Right. We do. <clears throat> like we can sure. run it back. Playing ball. Best call, we best call that could be made uh, in the so situation. Sh shame it took that long to decide that. that, that we were right, that we made a decision. We're going to live with it. And to be honest with you, if it turns out that Edgewater does win this game, you can't point to that particular play. No, no, way. When, no way. When that whole first half took place. Agreed. <laughs> Rucker trying to get outside, does so, shakes off one tackler. And we have a flag, a late flag coming yeah, in from this, on from the near six. side. It's going to be on six from Edgewater, or 20 from Mainland, and I'm thinking six from Edgewater. And B Buck is out there, number 12, Buck Walt, Walt, is it Watkins? Yeah, Buck Walt is doing a great job again out there blocking. I mean, he is just getting after it. That might be a makeup. You call. betcha, Coach. You betcha. And they didn't do that from the spot of the foul either. They did that from the original line of scrimmage, I think. They sure did. So now it's going to be second down and um, wow, 25. Second down and 25. A bus ride. Yes, sir. They're on their own 25-yard line. The proverbial bus <coughs> ride. <clears throat> and here we go. Bud Watkins wide right here. Do they dare? 
goes back deep to him. Haven't used him much in that capacity. Gonna go to the slant to Buck Watkins. Watkins on a 10 yard reception. Brings it up to the 35 yard line where it's gonna be third down for the Eagles. And no Coach Kahagan, it doesn't get tired and calling the person that's gonna get the ball before it happens, it, it doesn't. Oh. I mean, it's impressive. Not really, it's just, you know, insightful perhaps, not impressive. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, can I tell you how much I enjoy doing these games with you guys? Yeah. This is it has Apparently. certainly been a oh. lot of fun. Awesome. And we want the Bucks to roll so we can keep on doing it. Correct. Third down, 15 for the Eagles. Seven minutes and 15 seconds and counting here in the third period. The third quarter. <laughs> Brunson here, they're, they're playing kind of an inside technique on that. I'm not, I haven't figured that out yet, Coach Oakland. you got to get it out. Oh, get him thrown. Oh, that's oh, a pick. Oh, wow. could have been. <laughs> um, the intended receiver was Rucker. He was overthrown. It could have been in my uh, mainland interception, but it wasn't fourth down. Can you say ill-advised? I think mainland will come again with their pressure. It netted a seven-yard punt from Edgewater last time, so we'll see if, uh, I'll tell you what, that Billy Gagan still has great hands. Still has it. Still got it, folks. <laughs> Let me ask you this, guys. What kind of uh, insides would it take to come back to your fake reverse right here again after you've already called it? You've got him in the spread set. It's a little different set. Coach of the year. Coach would, of the year. It would, ha it would take COY type innards to do so. They have rattled him. They have rattled our punter here. Now he's hurt. No, he's just, oh yeah. Uh, we call that hit, the hit loser's pointer. limp, I think. He may have hung the ball out there so far to stretch for it. He may have hurt himself on that kick, Bill. They may have to replace him. <clears throat> um, that was a 15-yarder, so he's averaging 11 yards a punt for his last two punts. Wow. Just under seven minutes to go. The Buccaneers have the ball at midfield, trailing by a score of 21 to 14. This is Adrian Killens. They found this little something on the left side here at their offensive line. They're going more like inside zone and trying, instead of trying to stretch it out there. Well, Killens is definitely revitalized. Yes, he, was he, holding, is. he was holding yeah. that hip early on. I think somebody might have said something to him and gave that kind of a medicinal effect at halftime because he is definitely running with it. Here but comes Hilaire. Caught, caught him in what they wanted there. They just couldn't execute it with, with the pressure in his face. Uh, yep. And Blair was coming off the edge. I think any time Killens is set away from him, you're going to see that, or just about any time. Second and ten. That wide oh, receiver wow. started too fast fumble. there. I'm and surprised I, they got away with that one. I'm surprised they did get away with that, Coach. That's Caleb Hanna. That was the Canada start there. <clears throat> Mishandled in the backfield. It's going to be a loss of four on the play. Bring up third down and 14. I mean, that wasn't even close. Nope. One thing Mainland doesn't need is rolling starts. Killens. Good tough run. Picks but, up seven on the play. Not going to be enough. It's going to be fourth down. But you're right, Coach. He's not looking to get that thing outside. He's pressing that A-gap, and he's staying up in there. And that's where you're going to break. Maitland's going to go for it here. Fourth down and seven from the Edgewater 30. Number 20. Oh, oh boy, we here we go. Houston under pressure. What a nice play. Oh! oh! And it's recovered by. I've got to call that incomplete. There's so no way. They're calling it a fumble. They're calling it interception and fumble. Watch his hand. There it is. It's going to be Edgewater ball. 
Wow. Well, it would have been Edgewater ball either way, but I don't think they could rule that an interception. I didn't. I didn't think but, he had any type of possession. But they did. Okay. And that. And you're right. It would have been their ball <coughs> anyway. However, it, it, you'd just like to see him get it right. They're gonna get a drink instead. They're gonna. <laughs> and so will we. 21 to 14, Edgewater over Mainland. 5:22 remaining in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium and Larry Kelly Field, Billy Gahagan, Rocky Yoakum, and Steve Allen. 21 to 14, your score. Edgewater leading Mainland. It's first and 10 for the Eagles from their 30 yard line. Rucker coming near side motion. Pembleton, middle Green. screen to Dozier. Oh. Nice play Kyle, by that number guy, Oliver. that guy number seven, Kyle Oliver. If Kyle Oliver doesn't make that play, I, I, I don't know if they can get it to the end zone, but they've got a big gainer there. Great play by number seven, Kyle Oliver. Three on the play brings up second and seven. Rucker again coming near side. Pebbleton. Watkins on Gregory. Looking. As a receiver and in and out of the hands of the short-handed McLaughlin. He was at the sticks too. That's yep. going to be a first down if he can just pull that in. Hey, we can't we can't get on that kid too much. He's done everything tonight. He's 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 given them a chance to have the lead that they have and for this game to be in the stage that it's in at this point. The incomplete pass will bring up a third down, third and seven for the Eagles. No runs to speak of. Bubble uh, screen, bubble screen go, and the fade route to pretty much what we've had. Pembleton, yes, sir. near side, Watkins, yes, sir. reception. Yeah, ball is placed in a great position. Receiver worked outside, caught it with his hands, knew where the sticks were, all good. I'm good sorry I was a play late on that with Coach Gahagan. It happens. It, it happens. does. It does. I'll do better. First down at the at the Edgewater 45-yard line. But I believe that was, did they take Gregory out and Bostic was in there? It wasn't Gregory that time. He, Bostic got picked on a bunch last week by the South Lake, and you know how we are as coaches, because we get that tape. We feel like, you know, we, we, we got to give them the professional courtesy of going ahead and seeing if they fix that. That's right. Well, there's a uncovered number two receiver to the field. Here come the Bucks. Under Kyle Oliver. Wow. Hey, don't wake this kid up. <laughs> Do you think that Kyle Oliver regrets transferring from Flagler Palm Coast? As of when? <laughs> I'll take that as a no. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Makes guys like Coach Campana retire. That's Stuff right. like that happens. It sure does. We've not seen a jet sweep all night. Have not. And I really thought they would have something off of that. Maybe throw the seam route off of it. Second down in forever. Pembleton. Under pressure, and he sacked Brunson. That's Brunson, and he got up over him talking a little bit. It's getting a little chippy. Yep, well, somebody's not going to get to practice Monday, and uh, <coughs> I'm sure that it may get chippier. <laughs> Third down and 24. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Coach Wilson egging on his defensive lineman. I'm sure he takes a special interest in them having been a defensive lineman at Jacksonville University. Hmm. Timeout, Edgewater. Edgewater's taking a timeout. I got a question for you here. Let's keep it right here for one second. 2.33 remaining in the third quarter. With the DJ playing, isn't there a rule that says you can't have the band playing at certain times? No. Or is there no such rule? I don't rule? think there's okay. a rule. No, because I remember Dave Smith, the athletic director at uh, Seabreeze, he used to have some really loud music he'd play when we were on defense, and they were quiet when we were on offense. I've been to a couple of venues where they put you on the visiting side with the visitors on the home side with the home crowd and the band. Well, I was just kind of curious because all I'm hearing is the DJ playing. <coughs> it is Friday night. 21 to 14, your score. Edgewater still leading Mainland. Mainland came out in a hurry. Six plays and two touchdowns. Now third down and 24 for the Eagles from their 31-yard line. Trips into the boundary. Wide receiver to the wide side of the field. Now throw her that way. 19 Westbrook should have the interception. Uh-oh, six is down. So it may be a cramp. We'll see how they treat him over there. And 20 was shaken up. That's Brian Gregory for Mainland. <coughs> Back deep to receive the MJ Butler punt, Kalo Hanna, and Wilford Taylor. Danger written all over it, but I don't think this punt's going to ever reach these guys. If our last two are any indication. On the end of this win, we've got a little breeze here tonight for the first time in a while. And a rattled punter. There we go. Whirly bird looking oh, kick. Here comes the four at the 25. A lot of, lot of room there. Yeah, I thought that we we're going to see an exciting return, but we saw a fair catch instead. 220 to go. 21-14. Edgewater Eagles lead the mainland Bucks. Yes, they do. Now you got to tell everybody who you are or where we are. I'm straight out of <laughs> Cherokee, Oklahoma, and uh, quite proud to be here in Daytona Beach. I don't, know, Camp. I don't know how famous that song is going to be. Oh, it'll be famous. Okay. As long as you say so. First and ten Buccaneers from their 25-yard <laughs> line. Uh-oh. We got a, some kind of penalty here. Defensive offsides didn't need that. No, Malin doesn't need any help. Dante Abraham, a little excited. That's how we started out the game. So it's now first down and five from the Malin 30. There's the cutback trap back to the left. And shoestring tackle by number seven. That would be Ronald Woodruff. Safety. ESPN is in the house. First down and ten. Yes, it is. For the Buccaneers. 207 and counting. That's Killens again. He is finishing these runs in the second half. Somebody's exactly. lit a fire under Adrian Killens at halftime. Absolutely. He is, he is just rejuvenated, and he has run the football very well. Ball taken up to the 45-yard line. Gain of eight on the seven on the play. It'll be second down and three. Houston. Pass complete to Wilford Taylor. You know who was there. Number 20. Just short of a first down. C.D. Blair on the tackle. 
C.D. Blair is going to sleep well tonight. He, he has played a whale of a game. Third and very short for the Buccaneers. Still working on number six, McLaughlin, over there on the far sideline, I see. C.D.'s getting ready to come off the edge. I'm out, Malin. Malin's taking it. So will we. 21 to 14, your score. Edgewater leading Malin with 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium. Larry Kelly Field, Billy Gagan, Rocky Yoakum, and Steve Allen. 21 to 14, your score. Edgewater leading Mainland. The Buccaneers facing a third and short situation. Power set in the ball game for Mainland. That's Kyle Oliver on the carry. C.D. Blair comes off the edge and comes very close, just making that stop short. But it's a first down for the Buccaneers. They continue to march. Ball placed at midfield. Kyle Oliver picked up about a yard and a half on that carry. Mainland may get one playoff before the fourth quarter. Oh my goodness, what wow. a break on the ball wow. by number wow. 11. That is wow. Marquise Bruce, 5'10", 160, junior defensive back, and he broke on that ball, folks. Second time tonight that the Edgewater DB has been very close to just, you know, kind of breaking the back on that stop route of the mainland offense, but they get out of it, second and 10, get to reload. Wilford Taylor was the intended receiver, and that incomplete pass makes a liar out of me because... 25 seconds remaining, and Mainland will get a second playoff. You saying you're wrong? Chris? Yes, I am. Okay. Houston going deep, has a man wide open. Can't keep him in bounds. throws him out of bounds. Uncharacteristic, he, those are the throws that this year he's been pretty spot on with and flipping it out there. I think it speaks to the closeness of the game and the physicality and the things that are going on. These yards have been a little bit tougher contested tonight than some of the ball games that Mainland has been in. Yeah, this is the best ball game we've seen Mainland Absolutely. play in all year. It's the best showing by their opponent for sure. Mm -hmm. Will Collins was the intended receiver for the Buccaneers. Third and ten from the 50. Again, I'm a liar. They have been a predominant three by one team tonight, huh? Yep. Here comes C.D. Blair. They pick He's it up picked the back. up. That's Collins again. Nice tackle yes, by number seven. Was. Safeties are good open field tacklers, good good players. Not. We'd heard her secondary wasn't that good, but I think they're pretty good. Coach, I, I, I'm not seeing that. <coughs> I, I agree totally with you. They've played very well tonight. Collins is tackled at the 35-yard line. Dragging and into the fourth quarter, and you've got the number one team in the state who averages... <laughs> A lot of offense, um, and they've got 14 points tonight. That's the end of the third quarter. We head into the final stanza. 21 to 14, Edgewater leading Mainland. Buccaneers have the ball when we come back. First and 10 from the Edgewater 34-yard line. We'll be back.
Welcome back to Municipal Stadium. Larry Kelly Field, Billy Gahagan, Rocky Oakham, and Steve Allen. Start of the fourth quarter, 21 to 14. Edgewater leading Mainland High School. Both teams are district champions in their respective districts. Mainland has the ball first and 10 at the Edgewater 34 yard line. Houston, gonna go up top, his receiver falls down. Nobody saw the ball there. He did, and because if three could pick that up, he would have picked it off and still be running with it. And We need to get up over there on the sideline and get off the field, or we don't want to stop there. We're gonna stop it for a cramp. Turn it into a World Cup event. The mainland receiver fell down. Pass ball's incomplete, it'll be second down. And 10, 11 minutes, 55 seconds remaining. Let's talk about the scenarios, Coach Oakham. All right. If the Buccaneers are to win, no, if, they, if, if the Buccaneers are to lose, season's over, we know that. If they are to win, take what? us through the, the possible situations for the Bucs. All right. If they win, they will play the winner of Winter Haven High School and South Fort Myers High School. If Winter Haven wins the ball game, they'll come back here to Daytona Beach and we'll have a chance to see the Bucks play at home again next week. If South Fort Myers wins, then Mainland will go to the subway and buy a lot of sandwiches and ride a long way over to Fort Myers. Long, long way. And uh, you'll have to call us and tell us what happened yeah. on that game because we won't be there. But... Uh, taking it a little further if they win tonight, which they've got a lot of work to do that, and if they win next week, then in two weeks we would host Miami Central, I believe the defending state champions. Correct. Yes, sir. And they will need a police car out here with radar because there will be more speed on this field maybe than it's ever been. Coach, that, it, it would be incredible. Uh, just the, the, I mean, the athleticism out here tonight is incredible. It would be a step above even what we have. And I'll bet you, I don't know this, but I'm going to suggest that the central fan base will travel pretty well. Well, they've had some opportunities. They've been out of state to uh, Hoover. They've been out of state. I think they played in North Carolina as well. Uh, they, they've, they're they well seasoned in having to travel and play and being on the national scale. Um, and they're, both the teams are no strangers to one another. No. And they've met two times in state semifinals, I believe, with the Central winning both of those ball games, and uh, I would think that it would be qu a quite a spirited affair. Central uh, won last year 28 to 15. <coughs> All right, we've got Wilford Taylor off the sideline now. He still continues to cramp up, but they're going to mark the ball ready for play. Staying in three by one. Leaving number three over there by himself to cover the single receiver. Killens on the carry. Second and ten, he's going to pick up about five yards. to bring up third and five for the Bucks from the Edgewater 30-yard line. Wasn't much of a hole there, and Killens just kept his feet moving and picked up about five yards, it looks like, maybe four. show this coverage and then rotate at the last second. Number 20 will come rolling in and become a pass rusher or a chase down from behind player, which he did. You he's got keep the ball. He's involved almost on every play. When the ball stops, yeah. he's there. He's just been, been a tremendous effort on his part tonight. He may be cramping up now. Don't bring up a field goal attempt, it looks like, for the Bucks. Oh, no. Short yardage play, sir. Well, they're going to go. Ja'Kai Polite is in. Kevin McCrary is in. Kyle Oliver is in. <clears throat> We're going for it on fourth and one. It's And it's not a short one like it was last time. No, it's a, it's a, it's a real yard. Play action. Good call, Coach. Oh, it's a polite. Oh. And they're going to get interference. I think they're going to call offensive pass interference. 
I'd hate to have two correct calls on the same play. However, I, I would hope that you were right here just because I, I'm not sure that was a defensive interference. That's what it was called. Yep. Wow. I don't, I don't agree with that Coach call at all. Thank you. But I totally disagree with the pass interference call. And that's a shame. Well, it's going to be first down for the Buccaneers. And the ball will be spotted at the Edgewater 15-yard line. Ten minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the, in the game. Houston on the option, he's going to keep it himself. Cut back, far side, he's going to score 5 4 3 2 one touchdown mainland. We got us a new ball game pending this extra point. Sure do. And it's one where the blue shirts are way more excited than the white shirts <coughs> at this point. No doubt. Baudette's point after is good. So with 10.25 remaining in the game, we are all tied up. We have a new ball game. Yes, we do. And it has been all mainland in the second half. 21 yep. points. Edgewater held scoreless so far to this point. Edgewater will have the win going into this fourth quarter, which could be critical in certain situations. But... Uh, And it doesn't appear that Edgewater has gone away from anything that they did in the first half. It just seems that you know, Mainland Coach, has yeah. turned it up a little bit. Yeah, and Coach Allen called it. Uh, <coughs> Edgewater was not a dominant offensive team in the first half. They just made a few really, really big plays. And they just haven't made those plays here in the second half. And Mainland's offense is uh, firing on all cylinders at this point. They've got to weather this kickoff here. I, I'm... I'm I would be shocked if this thing goes deep. I think number seven over there needs to get himself ready. It appears. Well, as we say that, he kind of aims Onside. it back this way. Mm -hmm. Oh, hit. that's. There that is. is the flag. Yeah, it's about time. He better walk. Oh, now yeah. they're going to call that on 10. I don't know. <laughs> Coach, I tell you what. I don't know. He was if, quick you don't on that call, one. if you don't call the early on tonight when, when we had the receiver that you know punt. got hit on the punt, and, and, and then you're going to call a, a little reaction here. Not a good call. No. Not a good call. Bostic should have never contacted him after the fair catch. Um, but to, to make that call at this stage, yeah, that was uh, number 10 on the... Let me help you out with that one. Thank Sam Aseri Kanadu. There it is. Or Kanadu, depending on where you want to place the Asento mark. <laughs> Sam A. That's what it is. Sam A. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> out of Compton. So we have personal foul, dead ball there. And then we have a dead it. ball, personal foul. So we have to mark it off one, bring it back the other. That's kind of garbage. It's very sad. That's that's not a good situation. No, did just a little over involvement of the, by the officials. But hey, nonetheless, here we go. It's 10:25. We've got a ball game. Edgewater's going to have to earn the keep. First and ten, Eagles from their 45-yard line with 10:25 remaining in the game, tied up 21. Smash route to the field would be pretty good, I think, for number two there on the corner. Brian Gregory coming off the edge. Nobody picked him up. We're going to dump the ball off. That's Malcolm Taylor on the reception. You should be careful with that football. He did the old swim move over there. Pick up four yards. They're going to stop him where now we had a late. Stop. Okay, that, now, now I saw this play here. Someone from Edgewater came in as this thing was scrummed up, and they took a pretty good shot on Whomever, I don't know if it's Kyle. Is that who's not getting up? Yeah, he, he got it. He, someone came into the scrum there and took a shot on him, I believe, down in this in the 
just below where your shoulder pad level is, kind of abdominal area. It was, uh, I, <laughs> it's and, not Kyle Hall, I see him standing yeah. correct. Some aggressive football out here tonight. Could that be Hamilton? They're picking up a flag, or they put it in the pocket. So there was a flag down mm -hmm. on the play. Dead ball. Personal foul on the white it team. It is. It's, uh, oh, Brunson. Right? 16? Yes, sir. Marcus Brunson shaking up on the play. I didn't realize coaches were allowed to go out in the middle. I guess he was out there to check on his injured player, and while he was there, he just offered his opinion to the official. Correct. While you see a chance. Take it. Fine romance. Steve Winwood has joined us. While you see. You should know that, Coach Yoakum. That's all you. I know Stevie well. <laughs> I hear, speaking of knowing things well, I heard that you and Coach uh, Campanella coached together at Dodge City. Is that, that true? That is true. We used to go down there and hang out on Front Street. Yeah, uh, no place like Dodge City in the wintertime. Oh, you got to love Kansas. I'm assuming you mean Dodge City, Kansas, of course. Oh, well, I was uh, assuming that's what you meant. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. A lot of assumptions going around. Yes, there are. Second down in quite a ways. Pembleton. As a nice receiver. Ball, nice ball, nice catch. To McLaughlin. He's going to be short, but it's going to bring up a third and manageable. If he just continues to run right there, I think his momentum is just going to carry him over. He felt the DB on his shoulder, but hey, great throw and catch. You bet. A whole lot better at third and two. We have not seen much, speaking of third and two, we have not seen much of Mr. Rucker. No, we have not. <clears throat> He's going to come near side, so you're going to have Rucker and Watkins on the same side. McLaughlin on the other end. That's kind of scary. They're going to bring Oliver, throw the bubble. The bubble go. Fake the bubble. They got him. Come back for it. You can't hang it. Oh, oh, oh. I bet you we're going to have a face mask, face mask on Watkins. It's number four on the interception. Cyrus Fagan. That is... My good friend Jeff Fagan's son, Cyrus. Hmm. You, you just can't hang the ball in, in the middle of the field against a, a, a speedy bunch like Malin. No. If they turn that into a corner route, though, there's going to be no stopping it. Personal foul, face mask. That's going to bring the ball up to the 40-yard line. Maine will start their next possession there. That's exactly <laughs> what the Eagles did not need and exactly what the Buccaneers did need. It's been a heck of a hard-fought game on both sides. I, you know, I hear that. It's a shame to see anybody lose, but I kind of have that feeling with both these teams. Agreed. It, it, it's, it's been physical. And Edgewater has definitely fought better than any team we've seen versus the Bucks this year. Oh. Take your pick, Nick Ruse or <clears throat> Kalo Hanna. I'll take Kalo. Five yard penalty will be first down and 15. From <clears throat> Mainland's own 35 yard line. Nine minutes and 10 seconds to go in this game. That's Killens. Out the back door, and what another shoestring oh, tackle by geez. Guess Who. Wow. Man, CD. He's something else. He is fine football player. What grade is he in, Coach? Gain of one on the play, CD is a senior. Well, I'd have to think he'd have some offers to play some football after this year. Well, he's got the ability to do so. Yeah, that's he's got the fire. He's, he's, trying, sure does, yeah, he's telling Rucker, let's go. Let's. This is the time to stop these guys. 
We've got them in a hole. We should see that rotation with the heavy charge here in just a second. No, they're going to stay with it. Nice pass. Will Collins on the reception. Good throw and catch. It's going to be third down and four for Mainland. They're going to have the ball setting at their 46 and a half yard line. You have to pick your poison. You don't bring the pressure and you give him some time and he stands in there with some good poise. You bring the pressure, you know, you run the risk of opening the lanes up and soloing, soloing your coverage out. Big third down here, 752 yeah. left in it. Last time it was speed option on a play like this, but they're just gonna let Killen stick it up in there and make the first down it looks to me like. Oh, we're gonna get a, a left foot spot on this one, Coach. He's gonna be fourth He's and short. Be yep, you're right. <coughs> enter Polite, enter McCrary, enter Oliver. They're ready. It's not gonna be a play action on this one, boys. We're gonna smash mouth this one if it's short. Well, they've marked it as short. Here we go. Good call. Here comes the big boys. I don't know. Call me a gambler, but I almost go with the play action again. You are a gambler. Thank you. You and Bobby Bowden. <laughs> Kenny Rogers. <laughs> you got that one too, didn't well, you? Uh, yeah, I did. I'm starting and, and, and I'm, th I'm thinking... What's that guy that died that they can't decide who where his body's going to go? Jimmy Hoffa? No, the music <laughs> guy. Oh, Johnny Cash? No, that no. plays music on Saturdays and talks oh, about Oh, Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. That's, you may be the next Casey Kasem. I'm going to keep my feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what, the music references are, are flying. They are. And folks, I want you to say we have a good football game, so don't let the music <laughs> stuff run you away from us. We're just we just have a wealth of knowledge up here. First and ten for the Buccaneers. They're in Edgewater territory. They're at the 42-yard line of the Eagles. Dare we say the biggest drive of the mainland season? Sure could turn out no to be that. I'm surprised the flag didn't come in on that one for a late hit. Killens has really run the ball tough in the second oh, half. Yeah. Credit to the offensive line and to the coaches for, you know, just making these calls so they, they give him a chance to do it. But he has gotten the fire lit, lit under him. He's, he's doing a great job. What do you think he has rushing there, blind stat guy? Uh, Killens has 143. That means they'll find another 15 later. Killens on the carry. He's going to shake off the tackle of Johnny Matos but not be able to get rid of C.D. Blair. Nobody can. No. Comes the big boys back in. He's got to have at least 11 tonight, you think? This would be a good play. He might, yes, 11. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. But back to what I was thinking. Well, what I'm thinking is that this would be a good time to play action because it's third down. If it's incomplete, you could always come back. And there's nobody guarding the tight end if he wants to go straight down the field. I'm sure somebody, no. Nope. Fake the give to McCrary. And we're waiting for a spot. I think he's going to be short on that one, too. If our man on this side is going to get it, he, he is going to be short. really close. Oh, he got the right foot spot over there. I think I think that far side official is calling him short as well. The mainland, the mainland fans have it figured out. They, they're pretty sure it's a first down. Doesn't matter what we think. It's the guy in the white hat. And we're this gonna, is, this we're is really it. interesting, the way they move the ball to the side, and now they just come out and measure that. That's that's very interesting to me. That's a further, uh, further, further, a little further time. walk. It does save a little time, but I've just never seen it. Wow. Come up an inch short, I would say. Oh, he's going to give it to him. <laughs> Move the chains for the Buccaneers, first and 10. They'll now have the ball at the Edgewater 32 yard line. The officials are calling timeout 
Perfect. Water oh, break. Water. The last water break for one of these two teams. 21-21. We'll be right back. Twenty-two remaining in the game. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium and Larry Kelly Field, Billy Gahagan, Rocky Oakham, and Steve Allen. 21 to 21, your score. Edgewater and Mainland all tied up. The Buccaneers first and 10 from the Edgewater 32-yard line. Look for the late shift out of the defense with number 20 sliding down, but we don't Thanks see him. Play it. Well, they are going to play it. Play action. Houston rolling. My goodness, there's a wide open. open receiver, and he's going to go into the end zone, folks. Touchdown, Wilfred Taylor on a 32-yard touchdown pass. Well, Wilfred got in some fluids and got in the end zone. Well, it looked like CD came out of coverage there, and Rucker was getting on him and <laughs> not even chasing the ball. I, I don't know. It looked kind of it's funny there, but hey, nevertheless, 507, the Buccaneers have the first lead of the night. Baudet into attempt the point after. No rush by Edgewater. Snap, hold, kick, good. 28 21, Mainland now leading Edgewater with 507 remaining in the game. Guys, one of the games we didn't touch on, another playoff game involving a local team, is. Warner Christian tonight, they went on the road and we're looking for an update, but Warner Christian at six and four is at Victory Christian, nine and one. Coach Allen, what are your thoughts on that game? I like Victory Christian in that ball game. I just think that they've got the, the better bunch. They've got three commits um, that we saw, you know, last year. They're, they're well coached. They do a good job. The quarterbacks played in three state championships already. They're, they're the heavy favorite there. The Mainland Faithful are on their feet. 28-21, your score. Twenty-eight unanswered, Coach. How is uh, your your prediction feeling to you now, Bill? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just as confident now as when I made it, Coach. Da-da-da, da-da-da. <laughs> hmm. You don't say. Don't say. Okay. Oh, and this guy's shaking up near side. Get up. I have, at the half, this was an hour ago, in Class 2A, Victory Christian 20, Warner Christian 14. Much closer game than I would have ever expected. <clears throat> that, that was an, an hour, hour ago day. at the half. Is there any chance we can get the Fort Myers Winter Haven I'm game there? For that one, I'm hoping. Nearing the half, I'll tell you this. I, 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 I don't know if this is the right team. I'll have to check, but I'll just tell you that it's 19 to seven between two teams, and the seven is Miami Central. Wow. So it's either Hallandale or Allendale. It's Hall Hallandale. Hallandale leads Miami Central by a score of 19 to seven. Just put that wherever you want, Coach. Okay. Greg Linish is tweeting that update. Can you tweet from here? I can. But I see a lot of people tweeting about this game all over the place. At the half, Osceola, 14. Lakeland, 14. That'll be a ball game. Mm -hmm. Be some hitting going on there. At the half, Swanee leading South Sumter. 
by a score of 14 to nothing. Two proud programs there. Lakeland Christian, 28. First Academy of Orlando, six at the half. Here's one for you, gentlemen. First Coast, 28. Lake Mary, seven. I'm not surprised. No, not at all. It's at First Coast. They beat them last year at Lake Mary. And Bishop Moore and Merritt Island, 0-0 at the half. First and 10 Eagles on their side of the 50. Pembleton comes near side. That's Watkins. He's going to pick up. Oh, we've got another no yards flag. That's probably going to be a hold on the uh, Eagles. We'll see. Apopka, 21, West Orange, nothing in the second quarter. That's going to go against the Bucks here. Keep a drive alive penalty. It certainly does. It's a big one, too. No surprise in that Apopka game, Coach. That's, that's a, a program that's been there and done it, and a program that it has not. But Bob Head's done a good job over at West Orange. 54 minutes ago, it was 27 to 20 Warner with 11:40 remaining in the game and Warner with possession. Wow. Got the two uh, <coughs> big time receivers both over here on this side. And Rucker wide right. First and ten. For the Eagles, here come the Bucks. Pendleton, far side. Pass is caught by number 19, that's MJ Butler. Taken down quite abruptly by AJ Westbrook. Gain of five, Edgewater trying to move a little faster. We've got 414 left in what we have to think is maybe the biggest drive of their season. Yep. Second down and six for the Eagles. They're across the 50 into mainland territory. Pembleton looking as a Oh, receiver. they're going to call that. And that's yeah. going to be pass interference called against Cyrus Fagan and without they, a doubt. They sure did have him, though. And it was a great play call. And this Cyrus game. probably made the right move there. Absolutely. Absolutely, Coach. Just going to move the ball down deeper into their territory, give them a first down. But it was not a touchdown. Now, here's a question for you, Coach Gagan, if Edgewater scores. I was going to ask you, but well, I'm I, asking you. Let, I, let, let me finish the question. Uh, yes, sir. In, in, and and only one point down. Yes, sir. Will they go for two and try to win the game outright, or will they try to kick it and, and try to go into OT? I think with if there's too much time on the clock, I think you have to just go for the tie and hope that your defense can hold them. I think that this 31 yards is a lot harder to traverse to get to that decision than we know. But let's hold on tight here, see what we've got. First and 10 Eagles from the mainland, 31-yard line. Three minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the game. Pembleton hands the ball off. No, no. he keeps it. And now he throws it to a wide open rucker who makes a move at about seven. It. Touchdown. That 31 yards was the water. What, what a nice play. That's a, that's a Johnny play. football looking that play, wasn't was it? Johnny football in the Heisman house right there. Yes, 345 remaining in the game. I think he got to kick it. I think we'll see what they plan to do here. They are going right now for the lead. Are no. they? Point out kickers on the field. I got some more scores to talk about when we come back after this all-important point after. All-important. 28-27, <laughs> Mainland leads Edgewater. I'm going to hard count them right here and try to get that. Yeah, I, I was going to say, it looks like man's ready to line up offside. They right sure do. Just hard count them and get it. A run reverse to number two. He's not a wing, so it'll be hard to do. Mainland is Oh, we're going to have a delay game. That's no worries. No worries on the extra point. No worries. Right. Better than not have your people ready and everybody set. Because, you know. I've seen a lot of teams waste a timeout. Sure. They're a man short on, on an extra point team, and they'll call timeout to get him out there and. A five-yard penalty really is not much in this situation, usually. Very, very important point after from 25 yards away. Snap, hold, kick. 
good. It's good. 3.45 wow. remaining in the game. Edgewater, 28. Mainland, 28. Let's go over a couple more scores. I kind of enjoyed doing this to you. Let's do it. I have just been told by Kelvin Ham, the basketball coach of the Spruce Creek girls. Central is up 35 to 19. Oh, so it's a little different. I'm also being told that Warner Christian lost. This is from Willie Oglesby, a Mainland graduate. Warner Christian lost 41 to 34. South Fort Myers won 41 to 23. So if Mainland wins, they'll pack their lunch and head for the west coast of Florida. Thank you, Coach Oglesby and Coach Ham for those updates. Looking at some other games from around the state, there's some really good games going on, but I can also tell you that Tampa Jesuit will be at Bishop Moore next week. Lakeland Christian beat First Academy. Apopka beat West Orange 42 to nada. Oof. And the kick is going to be fielded at the 14. Ooh, that's got, Adrian Killens. He's off to the races, folks. There's one guy to beat, and he can't beat him. And he's going to be shaken up on the play, Malik Williams. There was a push in the back down here on the 25-yard line that I, I really thought might get called, but it did not. Well, a field goal would win this thing, uh, or could win this thing, so Mainland doesn't have to score. They've got to move the ball about 30 yards, and at that point in time, take a look at the clock, see what's going on. Three minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the game. Quick a couple shout-outs. DaytonaBeach-Live.com is carrying this broadcast. And this one is going a lot further, coaches, than we ever thought. We're definitely going up into Ohio. Thank you to DaytonaBeach-Live.com for the simulcast. Nationwide. First and 10. Easy from top. 50. <laughs> That's Adrian Killens. He's going to pick up three or four. Tough run. Clock will continue to go. 28-28. We are all tied up in this regional semifinal between the 8-3 and three Edgewater Eagles and the 11-0 number one 6A ranked team, the Mainland Buccaneers. Second down. Killens loose, he's again. loose. He's looking for the sideline and he didn't get it. Seven again on the tackle. Killens is gonna pick up first down. That's Ronald Woodruff. Edgewater hasn't, had a, Edgewater hasn't found an answer for the cutback on the zone play. They're, they're soft on that edge and they're, they're, they're kind of getting pinned. It, it seems if you're gonna take that tackle, that defensive end, inside into the B, that somebody needs to be playing that cutback because the, the backer doesn't need to be there no. on the back side. He could slow play a little bit for that. Speed will make you do that too. Got a man free look on defense here. Now they're going to rotate over yep. and the pressure is there. Going to single up on that one side. Oh, oh my goodness gracious, what a little dodge and play. Turned a loss into a gain there by the sure quarterback, did. Denzel Houston. Houston avoiding the tackle of Johnny Matos, who's been very a really good game. Very active, uh-huh. He and C.D. Blair have been outstanding. They, the, the whole Edgewater defensive game plan has been outstanding. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. They have had a really nice plan. Uh, if Mainland had come out as fired up at the beginning of the game as they did at the halftime, I don't know how it would be holding up, but they've done a nice job on the perimeter for sure. 225. And counting. Houston goes near side, has a receiver. Oh, running backwards. That's Kalo Hanna on the reception. to get up and not have his knee hurting him. Kalo lost about four yards after his reception. Nonetheless, it'll be third down for Mainland from the Edgewater 35-yard line. Third down, and we'll call it six. Malik Williams again. And, you know, the, the, these Edgewater defenders, they, they're playing their hearts out clock continues to roll. Mainland in absolutely no hurry. Edgewater can't stand the fact that Mainland is in no hurry. It's a big third down. 
I ain't sure leaving that single receiver side up. We're going to take the timeout. Mainland calls timeout with 136 remaining. 28 to 28 is your score. We will be back in just a minute. One thirty-six remaining in the game. Twenty-eight to twenty-eight is your score. Edgewater and Mainland nodded. Billy Hagen, Rocky Yoakum, and Steve Allen. This is Municipal Stadium, and they're on Larry Kelly Field. Mainland with a third down and six from the Edgewater thirty-five yard line. Mainland has one timeout left. Houston has a receiver on the wheel route. Ooh, I that was what, intended for Killens. Let me tell you what, he, it would have been a bad scene over there because Brother Rucker had read the wheel and it was going to be a collision. Fourth down. Wow. Mainland anticipated number 23 coming off the edge right there. And, uh, you know, Dante Abraham, he showed and then he didn't come and he picked up the back. Mainland is going for it. Wow. From the Edgewater 35-yard line, fourth down and six. I look for the little combination where they get the curl out. Timeout. Edgewater is going to call timeout. Edgewater has one timeout left. A couple more updates for you. Coach Ogilvy just told me that Dr. Phillips beat Plant. I'm, I'm slightly surprised at that one, but I know you guys probably aren't because... I don't know as much as you guys do. Correct. Uh-huh. Looking for some other other scores. Correct, oh. he says. I did. I did. You know, in the beginning, I was neutral, but I was so close to saying you got that right. I just didn't. <laughs> I did it for you. <laughs> I, I, I'm here for you. With the Dr. Phillips win, that sets up a uh, Class 8A Region 2 final between... Dr. Phillips, 12 and 0, and Bradenton Manatee. Wow. Joe Dr. Man. Phillips will I be think at he's home. Still there. He's still there. What else we have? Won it two years have? ago. Beat first coast for the state championship two years ago. I don't know if you saw them play uh, the team from down there in Miami, down south of Miami for the state championship here. Yes. Don Solinger's team. Miami South Ridge. Yeah, that's right. Here we go, gentlemen. Fourth down and six. Mainland from the Edgewater 35-yard line. Quick kick them. That's what you should do and pin them. Houston, back to pass. Under a little bit of pressure, he's going to roll to his right. Doesn't have anybody to throw to. He's going to throw, throw it up. And, and they, that pass is intercepted. Now, just as that's good as a punt. one I would have said knock her down. <laughs> yeah. Just as good as a punt. However, that's Mr. Rucker, who's <laughs> been quiet this whole second half. He intercepts the Houston pass at the five-yard line. So with a minute, 20 seconds left. Now you 90. play for overtime, I guess. You're not going to go. The chances of going 95 against Mainland are not good. I'd run the football and run the clock out and go play overtime. Mainland has one timeout left. They can't keep you from doing that. I agree, but one of the things that's not going to show up for Rucker in the stat line is that third and five when they run the wheel route and they kind of bait them into throwing what they wanted. They play him under and over, and Rucker was the guy there that just discouraged that whole deal. He couldn't throw the ball where he wanted to, and the, the running back was not going to go get it where he needed to because he was going to get hit. Well, here we go. A minute and 20 remaining. 28 to 28, your score. I sure can't see them throwing the football here and, and stopping the clock. Edgewater from their own five-yard line. First down and 10. Pembleton hands the ball off. See if Mainland takes their timeout or not. Nobody to this point is saying anything. I think they might want to see after this play. That was Dozier on the carry. And Brunson 
on the tackle from the backside. Clock continues to roll. Neither team is in any hurry at this point. It's second down. There was a loss of one on the play. It's second down and 11. <coughs> yeah, they're gonna they're gonna take that play clock down as far as they can. Pembleton, a yard into his end zone. Drops oh, back oh, to oh, pass. Oh. He's under pressure. No way. He's no way. Into the end zone. And that's going to be a safety, no matter how you cut it, folks. Safety. Well, folks, I've been there, and I hated it, but my goodness gracious, that was an attempted pass out of the end zone. Ball goes on the ground. Mainland fans headed for the gates. They will get the free ball. They'll probably have to try some sort of an onside kick from their own 20-yard line. And uh, my goodness gracious. Not sure what to, to, to say there. Um, just didn't seem like a very prudent move there based on the fact that, you know, you're not blocking them. They, 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 I was playing Gainesville Eastside one night, and we had the ball. There's a few seconds left, and I called a screen pass from our own end zone, and uh, I thought afterwards that the defensive coordinator would kill me. <laughs> um, and it was Doug Stanley, and he could have. So All right. 20 seconds remaining in the game. Mainland following the safety. Now leads by a score of 30 to 28. Hands um, team, I would guess. I would imagine there's going to be all kinds of a uh, onside kick here. Mainland covers it. That's the ball game. Wow. <laughs> a couple more shout outs to give. Internet engineer Charlie Williams, Double D Productions CEO and camera operator tonight, Dan Descoli. Folks, it looks like that uh, you'll have to watch the sports for next week's game and in two weeks get right back here with us hopefully we'll have mainland and miami central right here Correct. in daytona beach you got any previous commitments or anything bill will you be able to make that one i might be able to make that one we'll see what happens thanks i might even surprise everybody and go with double d to fort myers depends on what mood i'm in i'll let you guys know how the weather is over there. have a safe trip all right mainland's lined up they got Arm to arm here on the sideline. There's the onside kick. Is it going to go 10? No, they're not going to mark it ready for play yet. They're all looking for this guy who hadn't blown his whistle, so we're going to have no play. Oh, we have a timeout. The Bucks. that's their final timeout. I, I, I don't know if that ball was going to go 10 yards. Wasn't as pretty as that onside we saw last week, was it? No, sir. That was unbelievable. So we already know that if the score holds true, Mainland will for sure, without a doubt, be on the road next week. You're saying that like you're trying to pin me down in case it's not true. Oh, I'm just saying. No. I wasn't Okay. I wasn't just, blaming you. I, no, no, I, mean, I, I thought you were just trying <laughs> to make me say it one more time, but I believe it's true. That, that the Mainland coaches believe that's true. Okie dokie. That's where I got and my not, information. And not just because you said so. No, no. I Man, asked. I, I you asked figured that question. out on your own. I'm kind oh, of no. disappointed. No, no, no. I, I go to my sources. Here comes an attempted onside kick. man has got six players over there, four to block, two to get the ball. Nice kick. Ball took the bounce. Get it out of bounds, and you got it. And the ball went out of bounds. Dun, 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 dun. Folks, it's been a heck of a ball game. Incredible ball game. Yeah, really hard fought by both teams. You hate it for the the kids from Edgewater, but they played their hearts out tonight. They've got so much to be proud of to turn this thing from a one and nine season to the state regional semifinals. Is that correct? Is that what this yes, is? Yes, sir. Called? This is the semifinal, uh huh? Awesome effort on their part. Especially defensively, you know, they, they got held to one score in the second half. <coughs> 
Mainly came out of the locker room just firing on all cylinders. Illegal procedure on that team, or they kicked it out of bounds. It ought to be the first down going with Mainland, I would think. And they ought to take a knee here and be done. And head to Fort Myers. Or we could throw a double pass. Or we could throw a double pass. See if Polite goes out there. Oh, they're in victory formation. They've got Kalo Hanna 78 yards deep. Well, the Buccaneers dodge a bullet tonight. Yes, they do. I think you have to do that a little bit along the way unless you're just by far the best team in the state. Yeah, it's good for you. Edgewater kids have nothing. Nothing at all to be disappointed. I mean, disappointed, but not. They, they, they need to be proud of their effort tonight. And that's going to do it, folks. Your final score is 30 to 28, Mainland over Edgewater. Let's go ahead and wrap this game up quickly as the teams exchange pleasantries at 50 at, at the at, at the 50 yard line. Coach Elkham coming into the game, the eight and three Eagles now nine and now eight and four. The eight and three Eagles. We're obviously facing an uphill battle, but they led by a score of 21 to nothing at yeah, the half. Yeah, there'll be a lot of thinking about what could we have done differently in the second half, but uh, like I said, they played a hard football game. I think they had a good plan on offense and defense. Sorry to see them get a, a sack in the end zone with a few seconds left to, to not see the overtime part of it, but uh, heck of a football game. Buccaneers uh, played well enough to win, and that's what they had to do tonight. It was all all Brandon McLaughlin in the first half. He had three touchdown receptions. A lot of turnovers by Mainland Buccaneers. And again, it was 21 to nothing going into the half. Coach Allen coming out 21 to nothing. Six plays into the second half. The Buccaneers found themselves trailing only by seven points. And it was basically a tale of two teams. Exactly. Tale of two halves. They just they, they played a little lethargic or just didn't start very well, a lot like the Florida State Seminoles, but we kind of felt like that was going to serve to, to even this matchup up, and I think what the score kind of bears that out at 30-28, to 28. but going back to what they might do different or want to do different, I'm sure Coach is going to repeat that, you know, trying to throw the football and getting it out, and, you know, it's just how it is. You don't get to go back. We've had them. You've had them. I've had them. Coach had them. It's just how it works. It's the game. Um, it was a great ball game. But what are you going to do? You, you reload, you keep coming back. If you're mainland, you're, 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 everything you wanted is still there in front of you. And now you got to go on the road and uh, see how your kids are going to respond. I think this game will serve to make them better. Now they've played in a tight ball game. They've been challenged. And uh, hats off to Edgewater. They had a good plan. And their kids played very hard. Mainland outscored Edgewater by a score of 30 to 7 in the second half. Correct. And um, we would all agree that it was the toughest team to play Mainland and the best game that we've seen from both teams all year long. Again, your final score, Mainland 30, dodging a bullet 30 to 28 over the Edgewater Eagles, who just remember, folks, last year they were 1-9 and, and watching all of this from their living rooms. And as we said, the Buccaneers will be going to South Fort Myers next week. For Charlie Williams, Dan Descoli, Rocky Yoakum, and Steve Allen, I'm Billy Gahagan. Your final score, Mainland 30, Edgewater 28. Good night. starting this thing out like all great games are won in the second half. Killens again on the carry. He was knocked out of bounds by David Beecham, a senior who once he knocked him out of bounds just kind of followed him out there. Again, the swagger is still showing for Edgewater. Second down and two. Houston again to Killens. Killens running like a man on a mission across the 40 down to about the 31 yard line. Again, nobody's counting out the Buccaneers, but a touchdown on this possession would be huge for Mainland. Finishing runs, <clears throat> opening up holes. They brought inside linebacker there and leaves a crease in the B gap. He finds it. Mainland's on the march. First and 10. Houston fakes it to Killens. He's going to keep it himself. 
makes a move. Oh, picks up a nice block. And he's going to go uncontested for a touchdown. Five plays, and Mainland is in the end zone touchdown, Buccaneers. Minute 20 seconds. And the crowd has come to life here. As well as the Mainland offense. What a, what a drive. <clears throat> it doesn't take long in high school for Omo to, to take a flip-flop. It's pretty fickle. He's a pretty fickle guy. Yeah, he's got a blue shirt on right now. Yes, he does, Coach. Yes, he does. And the same thing that we did early on, you know, in the two-score deficit, we looked at Mainland's bench. Look at Edgewater's bench. <coughs> yeah, they're a little shocked over there. It, it does. It takes it out of you. Edgewater giving no rush on the point after Baudet uncontested. His PAT is good. So with 10 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the third period, five plays into the third quarter. Mainland now down only by two scores. Edgewater leading by a score of 21 to 7. That's exactly what Mainland had to do, Coach Oakham. They certainly did. They, they, they had to come out of here and give everybody a reason to believe, and they did that. And now they're going to put their strong part of their team, or what has been the strongest part of their team all year, their defense out on the field, and uh, see how that goes. But the guys across the, the way from, from Mainland, I don't think they were unfazed by that. It, it almost looked as if they said, hurry up, let's go, let's get our offense back on the field so we can put seven more points on the board. Well, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, they just got introduced to the number one team in the state pretty, pretty quickly right there. The DJ has picked it up a notch. The fans have started to wave their yellow hankies, their flags, I was going to say, but it's it's definitely their yellow towels. Peter Baudet set to kick off from his 40-yard line. And the Eagles are anticipating a pooch kick. Yes, they are. As everybody is up to the 15 and closer. Let it go out of bounds. Fair catch, the call. Should have let it go out of bounds. That's Ronald Woodruff on the fair catch. Now that's, that, that's something I think you can coach. I was going to say, you can't coach that interception deal, but you can coach that. Yep. <clears throat> that's about that's about an eight-yard loss by allowing that to be fair caught on the field of play. We always have the guys in the back coaching those guys ahead of them up on that one to let them know they've got the angle. They can see the kick. You know, let it go, let it go, let it go. They're going to say that he fielded the ball before he went out of bounds, perhaps. Yeah, yeah he made the fair catch, yep. I think. So, should have been the first and ten Eagles from their 28-yard line. Pendleton to Dozier. Gain of two on the play. No sense of urgency at all in the Eagles. Play comes in from the sideline. They break the huddle. Templeton and Dozier again in the backfield. Ten minutes and counting. Dozier gets met rather quickly by Kevin McCrary and company. No gain on the play. It'll bring up third down. In fact, it'll be a loss of two on the play. It'll bring up third down. We'll call it nine, loss of one. Anybody want to call this play? Screen. There you go, coach. <laughs> maybe even maybe even a tunnel screen. They've thrown that three times tonight. It was only been effective once. Not nearly as effective as a little running back middle yeah, screen. Number four has caught a couple of those. You see, he's here. They're going to run it in the short side of the field if they run it that way. Walkers so, out during their nickel package. Pendleton. Tunnel, tunnel screen. screen. In and out of the hands of Craig Rucker. It's going to bring up a definite punting situation for the Eagles. And it, it's nice when you've thrown the ball over top and you've made plays, but it still goes back to the fact that they really haven't had a lot of success on a lot of plays. No. So it's not really that hard to diagnose that they're, it's one of three, maybe four things. And the mainland was there ready, ready at the wake. And 
21 to 7. <clears throat> We're not even three minutes into the second half, and Mainland's going to get the ball back here with all the momentum riding long. MJ Butler into punt for the Eagles. Back deep to receive. One of the Buccaneers is Wilfred Taylor. The other one, I believe, is Tyree Bostick. And that's not a good way to punt the ball off. That's a punt of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yard punt <clears throat> by Mr. Butler. Didn't punt it for a first down. No, even that was short. Mainland takes over, first and 10 from the Edgewater 34 yard line. You know, you'd like to, you'd like to use your, your 25 second clock and you've got a lead and that thing, but you really have to be careful that you don't take yourself out of the rhythm that, that you have. And I don't think that they were really milking that that much, but I know that that's a consideration when you do have a lead. And here's Mainland setting up shop with 30, 33 yards away from the alumni stripe, as you call it, Coach Yoakum. First and 10 Buccaneers. Houston and Killens in the backfield. <clears throat> Here come the Buccaneers. Oh. Wow. Number 13 on the tackle, uh -oh. and he's going to get something here for unnecessary roughness at the end of it. That's Adam Hamilton making a great stop, great play, and then... It'll be dead ball, so it'll be a third down about nine when they get this all sorted out, I think. Giving him the business. Well, this is going to be from the original spot, yeah, not from the spot of the foul. Be, it's going to be a first down. Yes, it is. <clears throat> That's a big play there because Edgewater has, has no momentum going and you love the aggressiveness, but you, you just got to let the play be in. The whistle's there, just let the play be done. Automatic first down. So it'll be first and 10 for the Eagles from their 40 yard line. They're questioning where that penalty is marked off from, too, but it's from evidence from the previous spot. Here we go. It's already been marked. They need to just let that go and just play defense. No, oh, we're not going to talk about it. I'd almost rather be wrong and live with it than to, to be told that they were wrong and change it, yep. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And they'll have a hard time straightening this out because the chains have been moved. <coughs> that, moved. That little thing they put on there to mark the yard line has been moved. So you're going to trust the other staff that it's going to benefit to give you that. I, I, you know, I'm not, I think you're too influenceable there. And the discussion is about whether this is marked off from the spot of the foul or from the previous spot. And so they're going to explain that. He's got to be telling Coach Wilson there's no way that we could <coughs> create this. possibly go yeah. back and figure yeah. out where it was because yeah. we have yeah. no... You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't do it. <coughs> Excuse me. They're just in, they're trusting this. And I don't understand how it's a, uh, uh, a that's got to come, that's got to be a spot foul, not a line of scrimmage foul. I would think since it's dead ball, they, they called it after the play was over, so the play was there. I agree. I, I was surprised when the referee walked back to the original line of scrimmage and then stepped off 15 yards. Well, but the only thing that I question is, aren't dead ball personal fouls automatic first downs regardless? That could be that could be our issue, and, and, I, and I don't, I'd, I'd like to tell you that I know the answer to that for sure. But I can tell you for sure they don't know. Oh, no doubt. And I'm and I'm up here, so it's not as a big a deal that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They should know that, and they're having to. I just thought all personal fouls were, were first downs in high school. I don't know that. It's turning into the NBA, it's a flagrant one or a flagrant two. <laughs> Come on now. At this point, we've already spotted. We need to go. Well, and what we've done is we've been through a whole season with A1 officials, so we're, we're prepared for anything that happens. <laughs> prepared. Noted. Being at the practice, though, last week, I, I pointed out to, to Coach Roland and to Coach Wilson <laughs> that I felt like it's a run. No, it's a fake. Houston's going to go up top. Has a receiver. That's a touchdown, folks. Number three. That's Halo Hannah. 
Wow, welcome back. Like I said, uh, you know, the three touchdowns just kind of just kind of spot them. It's, Kind of like a handicap in a golf match, you know. Boy. You're just trying to, you're trying to, to find a way to make it even, and here they are. The Buccaneers roaring back. Wow, that's six plays, thirteen, make it fourteen points. Eight fifty-seven to go in the third quarter. And all of a sudden, the 21 to nothing lead that Edgewater had starting the second half is now 21 to 14. I just knew that you were going to say that it had evaporated, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, because evaporation doesn't go as quickly That's as right. this lead. You are like, right about that. Lord have mercy. So this is, this is the, something else here. I mean, not that we didn't predict that it was possible, but I don't think even we could have thought that three minutes and three seconds into the second half, it would already be 21 to 14. No, I sure didn't. Baudet set to kick off. Again, Edgewater anticipating a short kick. And Baudet's going to pooch it one more time. Near side. Fair catch called by Ronald Woodruff. And the Eagles will have their second possession of the second half at their own 30-yard line. 30? Or 27. 27, 28 yard line. Edgewater <coughs> desperately needing to get a little something going here. Even if it's just a couple of first downs so they can move it down and make Malin drive the field. It's just happened too fast and they're gonna have to they're gonna have to respond is what they're gonna have to do. <coughs> they've determined if they're gonna double up on McLaughlin here. They're gonna in and out. No, they're not. They're gonna, yes, they are. Pebbleton takes the ball on the screen. Got him. Has a receiver. 12 has got, got to come make a play yeah, on that ball yeah. because Westbrook never saw it. Intended for Bu Buck Watkins. Incomplete. Great play call. Great play call. It's been there all night. They've made that play call about three times. Uh, but Buck has just got to initiate. If he'll just come back, put his arms up, run through the defender for that, he'll get interference if he doesn't make the call. Second down and 10 for the Eagles. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium, Larry Kelly Field. I'm Billy Gahagan along with Rocky Yoakum and Steve Allen. We're about ready to start the second half between the Edgewater Eagles and the Mainland Buccaneers, this Class 6A semifinal in the state playoffs. Edgewater leading Mainland by a score of 21 to nothing. Coach Allen. Shocker of the state playoffs to this point, without question. I'm sure there are people following, not following only our broadcast, but around the state, getting uh, Twitter feeds or, or whatnot, and, and just not understanding what's going on and can't believe maybe that this ball game could be this way. And uh, I, we obviously have not looked forward to a second half with as much anticipation as we look forward to this one. It's awesome. I mean, Mayland's not been in a ball game like this. We talk about how quick they can score. We talk about the wealth of talent they have. Edgewater's done a good job of coming in here and taking away from them what they've put their bread and butter, the roll pass, the, the scrambling ability of, of Denzel Houston. The, they've limited the big plays. They've made Mayland turn the football over. They, they've won some, they've made some big plays in the kicking game. I, it, it's, it's awesome. It's everything that we can, we can hope for. And I just hope that Mayland comes out 
and uh, stands up like they and show they, they want the ball club they've been all year in the first half. And I we're think and, they will be. and we're by no stretch <laughs> counting me on out. No I mean, way. They're down 21 or nothing. We can't think of the last time they were down by by 21 points at all. Well, I think that's what makes it a great ball game. I think the fact that they've spotted them three touchdowns makes it a ball sure. game because they can they can get it back in a hurry. Coach Oak, I mean the pregame we talked about Craig Rucker, but this has definitely been <laughs> the Brandon McLaughlin show. Absolutely, uh, Brandon McLaughlin and, and number 20 CD. Uh, have been two stars on offense and defense here in the first half. I agree, Coach. I think C.D. Blair's played an awesome game, and he was one of the, the guys that Coach highlighted before the game and said that he had to play well for them to have a chance, and, and he has. We talked about swagger coming into the game, but Edgewater is showing a lot of confidence along with that swagger. Edgewater kicking the ball off. It's going to be fielded at the mainland 10. Here come the Buccaneers, and... Another open field tackle by C. Edgewater. C.D. Blair. C.D. Blair on the uh, top. On cue. Uh, that, this cat, he, he's a baller. Once again, your score 21 to nothing. Edgewater leading Mainland. The Buccaneers will have the ball first and 10 from their 25-yard line to start the second <coughs> half. Coach Yoakum, what do you? Th what, what would be your, your speculation, your guess as to what was being said in the Mainland locker room? <laughs> I would... Yes, you probably couldn't play it on our feed here tonight. Fair enough. Um, I'm sure that they were uh, told in no certain uncertain terms, unless there's a great change, their season was over. Coach Allen, there's what, a great change. What do you think was said in the Edgewater locker room? Well, I, I think that we're trying to tell your football team and re reiterate how explosive the same team that we got prepared to come over here to play, they're still in the other locker room that we've probably awakened them, and if you need to expect their best effort in the second half, and please do not play as if this thing is over because it's in no way over. We talked last week, Coach Jokum, that I feel like Mainland is a better football team when they play like this, when they just line up and they just go fast. And here, I agree. here we go. <laughs> I, I, I agree. They, they look like a, the offensive line has opened up two nice holes for Killens here on this first drive. And uh, 